Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Ulises Treviño, and speaking on behalf of Bio Construcción y Energía Alternativa, we are a consulting firm in Mexico, and we were very pleased and honored to participate uh, as advisors uh, for the creation of the new urban development plan of Monterrey, uh, Monterrey City. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, Monterrey City is the third largest urban area in the country. Uh, the metropolitan area is composed out of 12 municipalities uh, encompassing around 800 square kilometers. Uh, there's about 5 million inhabitants uh, we're living in the area. Uh, and as such, uh, Monterrey is uh, also the economic and industrial capital of northern Mexico. So there are uh, quite a few challenges associated, of course, with urban development uh, for the town. And for that instance, is that uh, the local authorities have created uh, and updated uh, a urban plan for the years 2013 to 2055. And there are some important green building uh, incentives uh, included that I will describe uh, now in detail. Uh, I think one important thing to mention also is that uh, this plan has been developed uh, in quite a different manner from previous ones, saying that this is citizen driven. Uh, and this is the important part because uh, the community has really been engaged, involved in the creation of the contents of this plan, uh, which is not a usual thing. Uh, uh, so that's one thing that sets apart uh, this uh, plan, and especially also the focus on environmental protection. Uh, and there are very, very special considerations uh, that are changing, of course, uh, the zoning ordinance, uh, and the permission processes for new projects according to this plan. Uh, but it is important to mention that this is a plan devised for the whole metropolitan area. But as I mentioned earlier, there are 12 municipalities uh, included. So the rhythm of acceptance uh, of the technical issues and recommendations within this plan are being accepted uh, at different uh, rhythms uh, in different paces. Uh, so I'll get back to, to you with those details when we mention about the incentives for green buildings. Uh, one other important consideration is about uh, the main objective. Uh, as such, this uh, 800 square kilometer uh, city which grew pretty much at a rate that increased in double in the last 18 years, needed to put a halt uh, to urban sprawl. Uh, and that's precisely one of the biggest uh, objectives, saying that it wants to promote mixed use and vertical construction. Of course, the intention is to uh, regain uh, all the infrastructure uh, intervene areas within the Siri area uh, with the objective of creating new community or public projects. So uh, there's uh, a good deal of intention in reusing the existing infrastructure or land for potential regeneration. And one important other element of this plan is about giving a privilege to sustainable transport and mobility. And here I should mention that it's not really an incentive, but it's a new zoning ordinance that, for instance, uh, buildings that are within 500 meters on each side of one main public transport line, for instance, metro or uh, rapid bus transit, uh, there are some density uh, bonus in the terms that you can facilitate also mixed use with higher uh, building uh, heights, for instance. So that becomes a, a very interesting incentive for developers 
and of course the intention is for those inhabitants, those citizens that live within that uh, area to use public transport as much as they can. So this would be uh, three main elements uh, considered in this urban development plan. So now we go into the applicable or specific incentives for greener buildings and I'm quoting here certified or third party assessed uh, green buildings. Of course uh, LEED is uh, most recognized, it's the, the one tool that is most accepted and used in the metropolitan area of Monterey. Um, just to mention for instance uh, Monterey hosted uh, the first LEED Platinum new construction building and the first LEED EBUM existing building uh, certification in Latin America uh, that was precisely uh, our office buildings uh, in Monterey the ones that achieved the certification but there are many industrial uh, commercial buildings iconic buildings that are doing uh, an extra effort uh, to increase their energy uh, performance and reduce their environmental impact. So as long as the buildings can accredit a third party or formal certification, you will be uh, entitled to ask for any of these four uh, incentives. Uh, saying the first, exposure and public recognition. Uh, the local authorities want to promote uh, uh, these kind of buildings that uh, are the, the new type of projects they want to see in the urban area. So through their websites, uh, events, public events, they give this special recognition to those uh, developers, those projects that have been achieved uh, higher environmental performance. The second one uh, which is very attractive is precisely expedited permits and reduced license costs. Uh, the permits, uh, to give you a reference, uh, which are usually within 45 to 60 days, uh, the regular process, if everything is in order, it will be reduced to 15 days. Uh, so that's one important incentive. And there are some proportionally uh, uh, discounted rates for uh, the license uh, of construction. Probably the, the most interesting one also is the property tax rebate. Again, this uh, falls into the realm and discretion of one of each municipalities. Uh, so the developer, the property owner, uh, once they have accredited uh, certification, they can claim uh, the opportunity for a, for a rebate of property tax. And the final one is precisely uh, technical support. Uh, out of these municipalities, a uh, few of them are already uh, prepared and uh, giving some advice uh, independently of uh, the internal uh, capacity uh, for the developer. Basically, uh, the government guides uh, the, the owner on how to properly and most efficiently achieve uh, certification so they are become so they become eligible uh, for all these incentives. Uh, I must say that this is uh, in early stages. This plan was devised a couple of years ago but uh, as I also mentioned it's up to the municipalities to accept in, and considerate uh, the different details for approval of these general incentives that uh, are now spreading uh, at the state level for some other cities and these are also in addition to federal incentives that apply uh, to greener buildings for instance those related uh, to portable takes uh, on site for, for uh, development and projects overall. So this is the experience uh, uh, from Mexico, from the, the city of Monterey. Uh, it's, it's, it's a working progress. Uh, 
but the most important thing that we're learning is about the awareness. People are becoming much more aware about the benefits and the potentials from higher performing buildings. And the word is spreading between investors, between uh, landowners, property developers, and and that's becoming very, very relevant. So these incentives we expect to be even more relevant in, in the near future. This is my presentation for now. So thank you very much for the invitation.